outside, and a young man from Nampa with the easy two off the glass. What a great spin move to the baseline for Trevor Morris. He's coached by uh, former Boise State coach Buzz Connor in Nampa, Idaho. Kevin Are with a quick turnaround jump shot. Narrows the margin to two. Chris Miles getting set to check back in at the next dead ball for BYU. So Morris on the perimeter. I think they saw one look at that move that Morris put on Anderson as we look at the points in the paint. Six to eight. Well, the Wildcats with the advantage, and there's another easy basket. And if you're Dave Rose, you're not happy about your perimeter defense no, because it's allowing him to get right to the paint. Well, they're on pace to score nearly 100 points right now. BYU's held their opponents to around 60 on the year. And, you know, we talk about perimeter defense, and you say, well, why? They're going inside in the paint, but it all starts on the perimeter, doesn't it, Andy, where you cannot allow either dribble penetration or you've got a good open look at a passing lane that allows that, that ball to get inside. Well, Weaver's done a nice job of uh, getting into the paint. They've got a couple of very quick players. Kellen McCoy, he can get into the paint at will. Going to athletic Davian Davis. And Le Lamont Morgan Jr. triggering in. He's listed at 5'10". He's 5'10", I'm 6'4". And we both know that's not the case, but I'll tell you what, he's got a stroke out there. And Lamont Morgan Jr. with a basket for BYU, a three-pointer narrowing the margin to just one. And Fredette set to check back in. So Dave Rose shuttling his players with, uh, with seemingly reckless abandon here in the first half. Charles Abul, really a good defender. And a traveling violation called on Trevor Morris, who looks and shrugs his shoulders. Yeah, I think uh, Ruben Ramos just got him from moving that pivot foot a little bit before he took that first dribble. Lee Camard sitting on that bench. Lamont Morgan bringing it into four court. Look at the turnovers. Wildcats with seven, the Cougars with two, and yet Weaver State still leading this game. Backing in deep as Miles and using the glass and his lead shoulder. He clears a little space, and BYU back on top by one at 27-26. Nearing eight minutes remaining here in the first half of a fast-paced basketball game in Ogden. In deep. Morris. Trying to do the same thing on the other end. He got the separation, but couldn't get the finish. Boy, great position by Chris Miles using his body. Morris couldn't get to the basket. And Abuo was fouled before he got the shot away. And a foul is called. Davian Davis is the man who gets tagged with a personal foul. Will return to Ogden right after this. When I was younger, was super adamant to getting me to play basketball, and I mean, I may have lacked some abilities when I was younger. I, I struggled a bit, and he always talked to me about practice and practice and practice. I mean, that practice has, has developed something inside of me, um, a love for basketball that's beyond most anything else. I mean, after I talked to Coach Rose, and he was, he was like, you know what, it'll be better if you redshirt, and um, it'll be better for your career and, and for us in the future to have you, have you later. Um, when he told me that, I was, I was heartbroken. But after a while, I kind of got the hang of it, and I, but I still just could not wait, wait to, to put on the jersey this year. And we learned the, the, the opposing team's uh, tactics and strategies, and, and, we'd, and we'd try and take on that role. And, it was it was fun. I mean, it was it was fun to take on those roles and to pretend you're someone you weren't, and and to really um, develop your your abilities. I feel confident in my abilities and and things like that, and and in my ability to progress and, and get better. And so to be able to come in and have a chance to play on a team like that is is once again uh, a basketball player's dream. <laughs> University 27-26. We welcome you back to Ogden, and we welcome to the broadcast table a coach of the year in the Big Sky Conference, a guy who has uh, continued to keep his team into the playoffs as the Weaver State Wildcats won at Cal Poly in football last week, and you're going to Montana this week, and I, I don't know how you do it. You're getting younger every year. 
Hey, Adam, I don't feel younger. <laughs> Coach Ron McBride, whose Wildcats uh, got a big upset win last week at Cal Poly. Sure did. We played, uh, we played terrific down there. It was, a, it was a fun game, I tell you. I know you're watching a basketball game here. We'll let Tavernari shoot that three. It's off the mark, and a rebound comes down to the Wildcats. I'll tell you one thing. There's a lot of offense in this one, but you've had a lot of offense yourself out there. You guys can put some points up this yeah, year, Ron. Yeah, we've got the quarterback is really good. I and mean, they got good skill guys with him, so. so. Uh, all right, so talk to me. We'll just let them play for a while here because yeah. they're going to make a few baskets, and they're going to miss a few, too, obviously. Yeah. Let, let's, talk, let's talk about your football team this year. I mean, the great year, you obviously go in with a lot of anticipation, but was this a surprise to you? Well, I thought after we after we played at Hawaii, I thought we had a we had a chance to be a real good team because we we didn't uh, we didn't panic over there and we didn't let the let the crowd bother us. We didn't let anything bother us. So and the players just kept playing. And uh, after that, I thought, hey, this team really has a chance because generally speaking, over there, I've taken a lot of teams over there and you. It, and they're usually really physical, and I wanted to play a real physical team early to to see how we how we do against a team that would really bang us around. And and physically, we did a real good job. And uh, so I came back from that feeling really confident that we could be a good team. Yeah. Plus, you stole your quarterback out of there too, right? Yeah. He was, yeah. <laughs> so they probably didn't like that a whole bunch. You, you know, you you talk about uh, Hawaii. You always had the Polynesian connection. You've always had a connection to the islands, and that nothing changed when you came here to Weber State. Absolutely not. Yeah. We've we've uh, we've done we've done really well over there, and uh, and we have some. You know, we have some really good, we have some really good players on our team from from there, obviously. And now you get your old friends at Montana. It just seems like every <laughs> year you beat them here in the regular season, but it just seems like every year, if you're going to win that national championship, it has to go through Montana, and that's where it's going for you this Saturday. Yeah, that's exactly where it's going. So, uh, but you know, I'm just happy to be playing this time of year. And I don't care who we're playing. <laughs> you know, we we'll play, we we'll play. We'll play Montana, we'll play uh, Oklahoma. I don't care who it is. Well, and you, just like the basketball team, Ron, you guys have been great when you haven't turned the ball over. That's yeah. been the only bugaboo you had all year. You've only been in trouble in games when you turned it over. That's exactly right. Well, that's the a, that's a number one stat in football, and that, that's what killed Cal Poly last week. They turned it over five times in the game. They had, they'd only turned it over four times in the whole year. I got to ask you this as Tavernari misses and the ball comes off to Weaver. How exciting is this for you and and, and how's your health? Because I know there was a scare a few weeks ago. You scared all of us to death. Yeah, well, I just kind of went down, you know, and I was kind of dizzy and, you know, I just didn't feel right. And uh, the doctors, of course, they took a lot of precautions, but we changed a, a couple of medications I'm on. They, they took me off of and, uh, and it, it seemed to, you know, I feel a lot. I, I have a lot more energy now, you know, because sometimes those, uh, those medications, they kind of they kind of wear you out, you know. You, you, you get tired just because they, it's like you're, uh, you're, walk, you're walking around as a zombie sometimes. But, uh, but I feel a lot better. I feel a lot more, you know, just like I'm, I'm, I'm with it, you know what I mean? And I'm sure as every Saturday goes, you put a W in the column, you feel a lot better still, don't you? Well, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, it's it's been a it's been a great ride with this team, you know. I I I, I don't know when it's going to end, but I tell you what, these guys these guys are pretty special group of kids. Panos with the foul call on him. Uh, they're there for Weber State and the Wildcats. Neither team, they, by the way, they're helping us out with this interview because they only have one basket scored <laughs> since you sat down at the table. So our timing is good. I'm not sure the coaches appreciate it, however. And the inbound pass coming from Morgan to McGregor into the game for BYU. So we're approaching five minutes remaining here in this first half. With us at the table, Ron McBride, head football coach at Weber State, whose team just continues to play in the uh, playoffs for the division. Now, you, you've coached, obviously, at, at, at several levels. And, you know, there's still this end debate about whether or not in Division One football you can have a playoff for a national championship. Here you are in your division. You're playing for it right now. You're playing in a playoff situation. Realistically, is there any reason they can't implement this thing in Division One? Absolutely. There's no. There's there's a there's a great reason. It's all about money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why it won't ever happen. You got you got too much money invested in the bowl in the bowl systems to. Uh, in, in, I don't see it ever happening. I mean, it's because because there's. There's people that have spent all these years establishing their, their bowls and, and the financial part of the bowls, and then all of a sudden they're going to have to give that up. And, and uh, I don't see it ever happening in, in, uh, 
in Division One football. So you see, the cynic says it, it's 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 reality. Uh, the only reason is the financial. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the schooling and the length of the season or anything else because you, you've proven you can do it. Hey, Ronnie, listen, we'll let you go enjoy this okay. game. Hey, Coach, uh, on behalf of a lot of people here in Utah, all your time at University of Utah, now here at Weaver, we wish you well this Saturday. Well, really happy you. for everything you've done here and uh, been a great example and influence for this whole state. We're behind you. Wish you well. Okay, thank you very thank, much. Thank you. Hey, you guys enjoy the game, man. Ronnie Mack, it's always a pleasure. Hi, right. right, Stevie. All right, take care. We'll take the break. We'll be back. It's a two-point Cougar lead. Besides just the campus, because campus is real nice, it's real beautiful, I would say the people and how loving and like you know welcoming they were, it was just a good experience. And I really, you know, just felt a lot of love there and felt like this is a place I could be. Gardening. Kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's not one at all. Um, honestly, I think my uh, favorite class has been uh, family recreation with Heather Johnson. You know, the family emphasis is so important in your everyday life, and it's important to know how, you know, how to have fun within your family, how important it is for a family to do things together. Honestly, I may get a little more attention because I have cornrows. You know, maybe some females may say, can I touch it? Or how, you know, they may ask questions about it. Cosmo is the man. So I've never really been around a lot of mascots. So I didn't understand why he wouldn't talk back to me. Um, you know, he was real silent, but um, then I, you know, I figured it out eventually. But he just kept giving me signals, you know, with his hands and handshakes and, you know, the whole nine. So I don't think Mormons are any different from, you know, regular people. It's just different beliefs, and that's how it is around the whole world. So I think it's just been great. I'm glad to be here, and, you know, I'm glad to be learning and embracing the culture. Welcome back, everybody, here in Ogden with 3.59 remaining in the first half. And it is a tight one between PYU and Weber State, a two-point Cougar lead at 32-30. to 30. Steve Brown along with Andy Toulson. Nice to have you aboard. Boy, the crowd's into it tonight, too. You know, Weber has played some great first halves, Andy, and the, and the real challenge, of course, is to keep it going through a full 40 minutes. Kellen McCoy is a guy who, you know, he's the energizer bunny out there, five foot six, and running the point for Randy Ray's team. Well, we were shooting 58% in this first half. Dave Rose not going to be happy about that as he goes into the locker room at halftime. And McCoy squeezing off that second free throw, so he adds two more to his total. And Kellen McCoy now with seven points. But he came in and uh, really energized the, the, uh, the Wildcats when they needed a little bit, a bit of a spark with about, uh, well, probably 10, 11 minutes gone in this first half. Yeah, Kyle Bullinger. Really with a nice start, got 13 points in the first half. Kellen McCoy done the damage here in the last three or four minutes. Well, that's one way to break the zone as the shot falls from the outside for Jimmer Fredette. But that Weber State zone, kind of a 1-3-3, three, three, so those elbows, those wing players of BYU, you've got to slide up a little bit more on top and create some distance to get the shot off. There goes Bollinger to the basket, double clutches. Young man out of Mountain View, Wyoming, with another basket. Boy, what a first half Kyle Bollinger's had. And McCoy knifing in to knock the ball out of bounds. Fredette was the man who uh, the pass was intended for. And now the official says it came off. And that ball goes to Weber State. And McCoy is everywhere. Not only quick. Again, take a look at that. First of all, his socks and his shorts almost meet. So they're not much leg to see. But those, uh, those calves look like thighs. He's got some spring in those legs. And he can get to the basket. He is absolutely fearless. He'll put his head down and go right into traffic. And they'll jump out on the screen. And there's Morgan. Morgan steals it from him. You got a battle of two little men out there. A lot of quickness. Boy, and that's why Dave Rose has Lamont Morgan in the game to try and stay in front of Kellen McCoy. McCoy committing the foul after the ball was knocked away. Heads up defensive play by Lamont Morgan. Lamont now, Morgan got his left hand in there, knocked it away. And according to the program, Lamont Morgan towers over McCoy by four <laughs> inches. One is 5'10", the other is 5'6". Look at Dave Rose, head coach at BYU, as Lamont Morgan goes to the free throw line. Inside three minutes remaining here in the first half. BYU with a one-point lead at 
I'll make it two. Hey, KJAZ is your home for college basketball, and Saturday we've got another great matchup for you. The Utah State Aggies hosting the same BYU Cougars at Energy Solutions Arena, the neutral site. And you can catch it all beginning not at 7 p.m., but at 5 p.m. right here on KJAZ, your TV for life. Don't believe everything you see. 5 o'clock, note that start time, BYU against Utah State from Energy Solutions Arena. Well, Utah State undefeated on the season as well. We'll see how BYU fares tonight, but uh, should be a great ball game Saturday. McCoy getting a rest for Randy Ray's Wildcats as Panos squares up, goes inside. Oh, that's a tough chance. He scores against McGregor. Yeah, Panos wanted the foul as well. Real strong move. Two big bodies in there, and they're going to collide. The fish is going to let them bang a little bit, and that's good to see. You don't want to call every ticky-tack foul, but they'll watch it closely. It's an in-state game, and emotions can start to get away. Contact underneath. I think Bollinger is going to be called with a foul. No. Yep, he is. He is. He rolled into uh, McGregor. Went down to try and catch the basketball and fell into the legs of McGregor and committed the personal foul. Here's the entry pass, right? Yeah, Lamont Morgan driving left side of the lane. You tried to see. get it over to McGregor. Bollinger got that arm and shoulder in, but he was leaning with the body, too. They went hip to leg. Well, and that's one of those that the referee didn't want to call, but he had to once Gavin McGregor went down on the floor. And McGregor, watch where he brings this free throw from. It comes out of his sock. It's one <laughs> continuous motion from the top of those low-cut socks and all the way up and obviously effective as he converts. 38 to 36. He has one fluid motion. I don't know a lot of guys that could hit a free throw with that, but it obviously works for McGregor. And now he'll come out and Miles will replace him for Dave Rose. Yeah, Gavin McGregor doing a nice job. Coming in, nailing two important free throws. Gives his team a three-point edge at 39-36, approaching two minutes here in the first half. And Lillard puts it on the floor. And meets the big man inside, and jump ball is created. And it's going to stay with Weber State on the possession there. That's the one thing I don't like about college basketball. You don't jump the jump balls. If you can throw it up to start the game, you can throw it up for jump balls. I, I don't know. I like the rule, Steve. I think that <laughs> okay. uh, it just takes out the, the referee error on the, on the tip. You know, there's so many times where guys tip it two or three times like we saw in the yeah, opening but tip. the chance, I just hate the game to be decided on chance. Luck of the draw, and that's what oftentimes that possession will do at the end. There's a three-pointer by Fredette. 42-36, BYU opening up the six-point cushion now as we approach halftime. This has been a seesaw battle. BYU got out front early. Weber State came roaring back, and now the Cougars have opened up a little bit of a gap. Bollinger trying to narrow it. He's fouled on the three-point shot. He's going to get free throws, three of them. So a foul was called on number 45 for BYU, Jonathan Tavernari. Yeah, Jonathan Tavernari didn't like the call. That is going to put Bollinger at the line to shoot three. And a chance to get his team closer here with 134 left in the first half. Bollinger, who's had a nice half for himself. And his basketball team, the first one, and a nice soft touch converting. Hey, coming up at the half, Alema Harrington and the powerhouse crew will take a look at all of the day's sports news. Plus, we'll have a KJAZ news update. And then Andy and I will break down the first half of this game. It's all right here at the half. Second one is off the mark by Bollinger. He can't afford to give up any points at the free throw line, especially, Andy, in a game that's, uh, that's this close. Yeah, Bollinger, what a half he's had. 16 on the night. And he misses the back two. Kind of a surprise. 8 of 16 for BYU and 4 of 10 for the Wildcats from beyond the arc. We told you the Cougars not afraid to squeeze off that three-point shot, and they've done it effectively. Kamard, one of those players, he's into the game. There's Fredette. He's also hit a three. They wanted to post up Tavernari. And they'll come the other side instead and post up Chris Miles. And Miles works against Panos and the rebound to Bollinger from the offside. Yeah, I think that's going to be important for BYU to have a serious scoring threat on the post. Chris Miles had a nice game a few weeks ago. Rear high, I think, against Cal Poly. Hanson, a bounce pass to Panos, rolling down the lane, goes to the left hand, but can't finish it. And here comes Kamard, the outlet to Fredette. BYU will try and score early. The little shuffle under Kamard. So Kamard, Fredette, Kamard, and they score to BYU. And that's what BYU does so well in transition. Very unselfish. Great passing. 
Seven points is the margin right now. About well, four seconds difference between the shot and the game clock. David Davis trying to spin around Kamard, and you see he gets that turn again. If you give him that turn, he's going to burn you every time because he's so long, that little reach under, it's just an easy layup for him. And Davian Davis with two more now for Weber State. Yeah, really an athletic guy, tough to guard. Four seconds on the clock. Morgan, and he's bailed out. There's a foul with 2.6 remaining, and a foul committed by Damian Lillard. Well, you play good defense, and then with 2.6 left in the half. And Randy Reyes, coach, talking to him, said, Damian, don't do this. Well, Let him make a tough chance, but don't put him at the line. Well, he's a freshman right out of high school from Oakland High School in Oakland, California. And that's why you need coaching, to just let him be aware of game situation and clock management. So at the line is Lamont Morgan Jr., an opportunity to add to the BYU lead that's five. Yeah, Lamont Morgan Jr. been real solid for BYU these and first six and a half games. He's going to get the bonus. Front end of the one and one converter. Randy Ray still coaching. Says, hey, we got 2.6 seconds on a make. Be smart. Let's push it up the floor. Let's get a look. And a pair of solid free throws. Weaver inbound, no pressure from BYU. Lillard shoots at the horn, and the shot is no good, and the first half will come to an end. A solid half of basketball by both teams. Good shooting on the part of both clubs, and the result is a 46-39 halftime lead for the BYU Cougars. Trying to keep their record intact at 6-0, trying to keep it perfect, and the Weber State Wildcats trying to defend the home turf. 46-39, the Cougars started out strong. The Wildcats came roaring back, and BYU creating a little separation as we've gotten to intermission. Stay tuned for the powerhouse crew and KJAZ News at the break, then we'll be back to take a look at first half highlights. It's the Cougars, 46-39.
The 1983 Holiday Bowl featured the Missouri Tigers and the ninth-ranked BYU Cougars, making their sixth consecutive trip to San Diego. Missouri got on the board first with a two-yard touchdown run by Eric Drain midway through the first quarter. BYU quarterback Steve Young settled down after throwing interceptions on each of the Cougars' first two possessions and tied the game up with a 10-yard run in the second quarter. Trailing 10-7 at halftime, BYU capitalized on a Missouri fumble in the third quarter to take its first lead of the game on a 32-yard touchdown pass from Young to Eddie Stinnett. Missouri retook the lead in the fourth quarter on another two-yard run by Drain, but couldn't put the game out of reach as the Cougars stopped the Tigers on fourth down at BYU's six-yard line with under four minutes to play. All-American Steve Young went to work, marching the Cougars down the field, including a 53-yard pass on third down. Facing fourth and 10 at the Missouri 25-yard line, BYU opted to forgo a potential game-tying field goal and got just enough for the first down to keep the drive alive. With a tie obviously not an option for the Cougars, just 15 yards separated BYU from the end zone when Steve Young went under center. Running play, Stinnett to throw, throws it back to Young. Young catches the ball! They might! They do score! They made it! BYU did it! What a play! What a play! Down but not out, Missouri put together a drive of its own, but came up short when Kyle Morrell picked off a Hail Mary pass to seal BYU's 21-17 Holiday Bowl victory. I am a teenager. I am online. I enjoy sharing thoughts. Music. Videos. Ideas. Information. I will not. I will not. I will not be a victim to threats. To stalking. To soliciting. To predators. I will be responsible. I will be careful. I will be honest. I will be smarter. I will get my parents involved. I will protect myself. I will be safe. I am a teenager. And I. And I. Will not. Be bullied. Thank you.